This is Shutters Inc. with Bruce Williams and Glenn Lavender. Hi, and welcome to episode 504 of Shutters Inc. This is Bruce Williams from ShuttersIncPodcast.com. And joining me once again from Reinfection like Central. <laughs> yes, exactly. From creative photoworkshops.com.au. Mr. Glenn Lavender, how are you? Yeah, uh, yeah. Let's see. Last week, vomiting child. Yeah. yeah. Joy of joys, joy of joys, joy of joys. Uh, this week, they're both coming down with colds. Joy of joys in the world of COVID. That's what you want as a sniffling kid. Yeah. And, and frankly, and on a completely serious note, I've been angry for days. What about? Men. Oh, okay. Pathetic, pathetic, small dick, bloody... Oh, I can't even put into words how furious I am at, at our gender this week. Okay. After two, again, I mean, it's, it's a weekly occurrence. Yep. But again this week, a man killing his partner and setting her on fire because she didn't want to hang out with him anymore. And then a guy jumping off a, off a dam wall with his baby to spite his partner. What? Yeah, in, in South Australia yesterday. And it just had me so f***ing furious. Yeah. Yeah. Pathetic, pathetic men who yeah, see no recourse in their lives but to bash those vulnerable people amongst them, their wives yeah. and kids, and then be so petty and so vindictive and so ah oh, that they uh, that they think, well, I'm going to get you by getting you or getting at the person you love the most in the world, and yeah, it just right. sick it sickens me to my gut. Yeah, that I'm a member. That I'm a member of this gender. Sometimes it really does. It yeah. just, you know. Yes, I know. Because I've had these arguments online for a couple of years. Men defending, uh, oh, well, women beat up men too, and women kill men too. Uh, yeah, of course, no. We're talking on a, a micro scale. Absolutely, women sometimes do this, but nowhere near in the numbers. No, nah. the sheer volume. And whenever I bring up these statistics, oh, those aren't real statistics. Well, they're from the Bureau of Statistics, yeah, government <laughs> statistics. Oh, it's all, it's all lies, and oh, the the whole system's against men. No, no, no. This is this isn't not against men enough. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's just really had my goat. I've been really morose today. Just, just thinking of that. Mate, that lady. is one yeah. of the reasons why I just don't read the news. And I know, you know, I know, can... you know, I agree with you. I should do the same. I know, I know, we should stay informed, but stuff it sometimes, yeah, you know. Yeah, and and that's yeah. that's the difficult balance is you you, know, yeah. you want to be informed about some things, and yeah, you know, there's a whole lot that you just go, I don't need all that crap in my life every day. But your mental, and, my mental health suffered, yeah, because of just. But at the same time, I can't ignore it because yeah. that, you can't shove the problem under the table either. No, you gotta, no, you know? and, and, and I don't and mean the, to imply that the story oh, no, no, that no, you've no, brought up is not no, important no, because it absolutely, no, absolutely is. Yeah, we agree. Um, but yeah, you know, there's just so but, much but we, crap we, in the but, media. But how how it impacts ourselves though, yeah. all, the, all the crud, and, and it's not just that those subjects; it's all the other crap they talk about. Oh, you know, absolutely. Uh, oh, married at first sight, br- bridezilla, whatever mm, crap. I don't who know. Cares? Yeah, the stuff that, that's h- half the half the bloody. Oh, Prince Philip blinked. You know, I oh, know. No, he didn't. He's dead. Uh, <laughs> Prince Prince Harry, <laughs> Prince Harry blinked because if Prince Philip blinked, that would make news. <laughs> that would make the news. That, that, that would be something I'd want to hear about. <laughs> I'd want to hear about because if he's blinking, whoo, the whole world's changed. <laughs> Harry, you know, it's like oh, Megan, Megan combed her hair. You yeah. know, put it first front page of the all that shit. Just is just so ridiculous. But, yeah, but you know, yeah, it, it just we know mental health. The funding in the entire Western society is grossly inadequate and needs massive, massive funding. But unfortunately, I don't think a lot of these people who commit these bloody crimes would ever seek help anyway because they're vindictive, no. bloody, arrogant, yep. pure, puerile, bloody behaviour. They'll never see themselves as the problem. No. You know, it's always them or their or her or that BH, whatever. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it's always somebody else's fault. Yeah. Yeah, so it just makes me ashamed to be a man sometimes, mate. It really does. Right. So anyway, I've been a bit angry this week. Right. It's a good thing it's not showing in the show. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, a little, little bit, little bit cranky pants. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah. So so I missed out last week. It was a good episode. You got uh, Mark Mark. Silver. Mark. That's the one. 
Mark Silber was on. Yeah, just to have a chat about bits and pieces of you know composition and yeah. He's all doing sorts some. Of stuff. He's doing some deal about uh, pay for the posters to give, give you a free book. Is that correct? That is correct. He's uh, yeah. I think all three of his books you can uh, pay the postage worldwide, and he'll give you the book for free. I don't know how his publisher feels about that, but anyway. Oh, sh- <laughs> so. I mean, has he got like thousands of these things sitting in the garages? What the hell am I going to do with them? I, <laughs> maybe. I don't know. I made to park the wife. The wife's going, I want to park my car. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sick Put of parking my car back in the, in the garage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a great offer. I mean, I, I don't it look at any's books, but uh, I don't look at anyone's books, but yeah, it, it seems, seems a good deal. Yeah. So, so go and support him. Get list. Let's include that link just here. Imagine the link. Okay. <laughs> In that little blank space just there, everybody. Yeah, that was it. Click on that. That's the link. <laughs> click, on, click on that. Uh, click click here. Yeah. Um, I did some portraits today. Click now. No, now. Some, no, now. No, no, now. <laughs> and we'll send you steak knives, You did some too. portraits. I was sent you steak knives, but unfortunately they've been used. It's just from the kitchen from, <laughs> from tonight's dinner. Yeah, I shot some chickens. I oh, saw so you did. I saw that. You were just chicken out some locations. I was chicken out some locations. <laughs> that was great. And then someone, and then someone came and said, "School holidays are over. Stop the dance jokes." <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> no, I'm doing. I'm doing an event next Sunday, not this coming Sunday. The no, but it'll, be, it'll be this coming Sunday when the podcast comes out. So it'll be yeah, about anyway. May the May, second. May the first. May the, it could be second. Shit. Whatever. I mean, I, yeah. yeah. Early May. <laughs> first weekend so, in May. <laughs> I'm doing the first Sunday in May, for that matter. Yeah. I'm doing a, a, a full day shooting event for a Canberra club. Nice. So uh, five groups of six, hour and a half sessions each. Wow. So it's a, it's a long day. Yeah. You know, when you haven't shot for a long time, <laughs> I'm kind of wondering, should I try and go out and have a bit of a shoot before? <laughs> <laughs> just to brush up. Just to, just to remember how to do it and how to talk to people again, you know? Yeah. So it's going to be a pretty full on day. Yeah. Yeah. So 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 I'm uh, trying to try. And, I was down location scouting the the said a, a big um, uh, heritage listed mansion uh, called Werribee Mansion here in Victoria. Right. Uh, and it was just like a, it's like a tourist thing, but you're allowed to walk around the grounds and shoot and stuff like. It's not going to go in the building itself. That's not allowed without paying, and they wouldn't allow a photo shoot anyway. Right. Uh, but we'll use we'll use the grounds. So I went down there because I've got an hour and a half. But each session starts at an hour, so nine till ten thirty. Session one, session two starts at two, starts at ten thirty. Oh, what? So I know, I know, and that's that way all the way through the day, except for half hour for lunch. Uh, Jeez, that's and a bit you rough. have to because otherwise the day's going to run out. It's going to be five o'clock by the time the last session finishes, and the light's pretty much gone. gone. Yeah, you're yeah, shooting by that time of day. day. So. Um, so we can't sort of extend it anymore. That's kind of the limit, you know. Yeah. It was supposed to be for September last year, uh, but, it, you know, COVID and stuff. So, uh, A, I've got to find a model who can tough it out for an entire day, which yep. is not easy, you know, and, you know, reliably show up because if you've only got one model, they don't show. Yeah. yeah it, it makes for a pretty tough day. Let's everyone we'll photograph each other. So, so I had to get down to Location Scout and try and plot a route that would allow me enough variety and interest uh, and also give me weather options, uh, and also have a route that goes from where, where they arrive to where they finish in an hour and a half, and then pick up the next group straight away and keep on going. Yeah. So, and, and it's, it's, it's rinse, lather, like repeat. I'll do exactly the same locations and types of shots for each group because, yeah, you don't want to try and come up with new stuff every time. It'll do your head in, unless there's some epic bit of light, then that might yeah. change things. But uh, so I had to go down and plot a route today, and uh, then we start off with a fence, then we go to a bit of building, then we go to a chair in an old room, yeah. then we go to a. Um, where do we go after that? I've forgotten already. <laughs> uh, no, 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 then we go to this wall covered in ivy, nice. and then we go to a tr- then we go to a tree. And the tree, just by chance, is 10 feet past where we started. Nice. <laughs> Which is really, and, and away we go again, this big circuit, you know. Yeah. So uh, that's going to be a fun old day. But, but I, as I was walking around, all these chickens came flying out of the chicken coop that's down there. Right. <laughs> yeah, and I might, I might have called them. And <laughs> then just come out now. And then they're jumping in front of me, so I'm, I'm just shooting because as you do. So I took some portraits of chickens. So if I get desperate and the model doesn't show up, yep, yeah, I'll be I'll be photographing chickens instead of chicks. <laughs> there you go. Uh, 
I'd even have to photograph a chicken. So that that was pretty good. Yeah, I'd, kind I'd of be inclined nice. to just rush each group through in an hour and twenty and give yourself a ten minute well, break. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll be trying to, but you know, the problem is, yeah, each person wants to shoot. Yeah, yeah if you've got five locations, four locations, even. Yeah. Yeah, let's say five locations. Yeah, you got roughly fifteen minutes, bit of a walk. Fifteen. There's only yeah, a couple of minutes per person to shoot. Yeah. Yeah. Per yeah, per session. So it's it's pretty tough. I've done them before. This is my, like my third one I've done for this group, and I've done other ones for other other clubs. Yeah. Uh, in fact, my next workshop is for another club up in this in Hamilton, about three and a half hour drive from here. Um, right. So I'm going up this in a couple of weeks' time as well. Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So I'm actually kind of getting back on the horse. Excellent. Or the chicken. The chicken is the best thing. <laughs> now I saw I saw on the, the Facebook today mm. uh, the book of faces uh, a photo you took in Vanuatu. No, that was on my Instagram. Was it? Yes. Okay. I saw on Instagram. Cut the last bit out. I saw, I saw on Instagram today, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> a photo you took in, in uh, Vanuatu. Yes, from fourteen years ago, fifteen years ago. So what? And I kind of saw a little bit of the brief that what you were there for. What's um? What's uh? What's uh, the story there? What's the story where? What that you were in Vanuatu? What were you doing? Why were you there? Right. So I was over there in two thousand and six, donating my time. Basically, there's a, a local FM station on the island of Tanna called Crest FM, and back then they would send. You know, one of the volunteer, like it's all volunteer run. Yeah. They would send a volunteer out to these, you know, tribal meetings, uh, which were, you know, really just a, a bunch of people gathered around a campfire having a chat. And they would record their interviews on cassette, like on wow. a you know, recordable Walkman dictaphone type thing. Yeah, yeah. And they had no means of editing these uh, recordings. And the woman who was running ABC News Radio at the time, uh, which was where I was freelancing as a production guy, she had been doing some volunteer work over there. And she said to me, she said, you know, she told me the whole story and she said, I'd really love to be able to set these guys up with a computer and some software. She said, if I bought the computer and the the software, and if I paid for your ticket, would you be happy to go over there for a week and set them up and give them some training? And I went, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so I gave up a week of my time and went over to Vanuatu and, yeah, set up this computer. And, you know, none of these guys had ever used a computer. So I not only wow. had to explain you know, the audio software, I had to explain how an operating system worked. This button's the on button. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So how successful it was, I don't know, uh, because I was only there for the week and I did everything I could to teach them as much as I possibly could within that time. So so, so you haven't sort of followed up or heard or listened or Well, I'm sort of or... not really in touch with the woman who sent me over there anymore. Uh, she's yeah. no longer at ABC News Radio, and yeah, I, I don't know what happened. <laughs> so, yeah. Wow. But I just happened to be, you know, going back through my catalogue of images on in Darktable and just looking for something to throw on Instagram and saw that and thought, oh, I don't think I've ever posted that on my Instagram feed. So yeah. gave it a quick process and yeah. <laughs> yeah, just that's it. That's the story. Hmm. And he took your camera, obviously, and took some photos. Yeah. And... yeah, yeah. So that would have been on my Minolta uh, Dynax 7D. Wow. Uh, so that's going back, yeah. And uh, I think it was the first time I had travelled where I was shooting RAW. Oh, really? I think I'd been shooting... Oh, yeah, I'd been shooting JPEG up until that point. Somewhere along the line, I think it was probably Shelton had explained to me the difference between RAW and JPEG, and so I, you know, started experimenting with that, and so on that trip I shot completely in RAW, and yeah. Can't remember what lenses I had. I probably had... I think I had an 
18 to 70, no, maybe an 18 to 55 because it was APS-C. So an an 18 to 55, which was a kit lens, and then a 75 to 300, which was also a kit lens. Uh, And they they were the only two lenses I had back then. Um, So, yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, I haven't been to Van der Art too, so I'm oh, curious mate, as it's to... great. I loved it there. Yeah. The island of Tanner, which was the island I spent my entire week on, uh, has an active volcano called Mount Yasser. I'm sure I've spoken about this before. Yeah, yeah, you've, yeah you've talked about yeah. it before. Yeah. That's uh, right. And you know, you met the NASA lady up there. That's right. Uh, the most active volcano in the world, and the most accessible volcano in the world. Hmm. Yeah, so that was that was an epic uh, moment in my life, one I'll never forget, uh, going and standing on the rim of an active volcano. Oh, I bet. Uh, yeah. It was just amazing. Uh, nature's subwoofer. Because <laughs> seriously, when it erupts, you feel the air hit you in the chest. It's like you're standing in front of those big W bins at a rock concert. <laughs> just <Yeah>. boof. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I can't see myself standing on the top of a volcano. That's not... Uh... Not in this person's wheelhouse, I'm afraid. <laughs> my my joyous fear of heights. Oh well, it's not really that scary because you can but drive your dude, car to within about a hundred meters of the dude, rim. I can't drive up a hill. Really? Yeah, I can't drive over mountains or hills or stuff easily. Wow. I used I used to be able to not walk under two under tall buildings. <laughs> That's how bad it used to be. <laughs> wow, I did not know that. Seriously bad phobia. So yeah, it, it's uh, going anywhere new is terror. Wow! Because you never know if around the next corner. Yeah, I mean the, the two most frightening words in the English language to me are scenic lookout. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> Cause you, you know what a scenic lookout means. <laughs> yeah. you, you, you're up somewhere high, and you can see a lot of stuff down low. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, oh, uh, okay. and uh, and steep ascent. There's a close second. Right. <laughs> Winding roads, next 16 kilometres. <laughs> yeah, so it takes me, you know, it's every, every journey somewhere new is, is, is laced with a degree of terror. Wow. You know, if I have to just drive somewhere in Victoria that I've never been before, first thing I'll do is get on Google Earth and go through the roads and look where, where, where they go. As soon as I go through anywhere that looks hilly, but you, cause you can't tell with Google Earth, of course, because it's you know, 2D yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I'll then go, I'll get topographical maps of the area. I'll find out what kind of elevations it changes to. Wow. To see if I can even do it. You wow. Know? Yeah, I know, right? I'm amazed that you're able to run international photographic tours. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. If it was possible to run tours to Saskatchewan, <laughs> Uber fans, I'll be there too. <laughs> Saskatchewan photo tours, <laughs> Death Valley photo tours. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm very, very careful where I where I mean. I mean, there's opportunities to go to incredible places that I just won't go because of the heights. Yeah, right. Yeah, I got it offered uh, just the other day to co-host a tour to Ladakh, uh, which Where's is that? up in the Himalayas. It's up in the Himalayas, oh, right. Himalayas. Right. Yeah, up, up in the you know, back end of, of India. Uh, yep. Incredible area, incredibly scenic. Uh, incredible people. The faces are stunning. Never going to happen. <laughs> so I think it's got one of the world's highest elevation lakes and some of the world's highest elevation population. Wow. Yeah. So it's yeah. I'm never going there. Yeah. So I said, <laughs> yeah, thanks, dude. But yeah, yeah, bugger off. Yeah. See, I, 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 this is all new information to me, and now I think back about you, you know, going off to the east coast of Sri Lanka. I'm thinking you wouldn't have coped. Really? It's a hilly place. Really? <laughs> yes. Information that would have been handy Unless earlier. Unless you want to walk along the beach all the way from Colombo round to the other side of Sri Lanka. <laughs> really? You are going to be going up and down some hills. How big? Well, they vary, but, you know, certainly in the interior they get really, really high, like really? a couple of kilometres high. But um, I So yeah. I, couldn't, I couldn't go to the Blue Mountains as an example. Yeah, I struggle with the Dandenongs here in Melbourne. Wow. I did not and know that. And, and, and that, that would rate as a hill in most countries. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, a, a, a slight, a slight, slight speed and, hump on the way incline. to the hills. <laughs> yeah, an incline on the way to the hills, yeah. So when I have to go to locations like that, I drag myself. Yeah, right. 
And then, of course, you know, I can't drive, I can't function for a day. Wow. Uh, I do some, and because I'm, uh, I'm subconscious is active, but conscious is inactive. Um, some strange and hilarious events unfold. Wow. So, uh, yeah, you'll find anyone who's been to New Zealand trip with me. I was going to say, New seeing, Zealand. Seeing Glenn, seeing Glenn laying in the middle of the, middle of the road fast asleep. <laughs> <laughs> on this mountain pass, <laughs> they're all photographing. They turn around, there's somebody asleep on the floor. On the road. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, and the wow. worst thing is, that, cause, you know, when I'm on these drugs, yeah, I said my my conscious, I'm awake and often awake, and sometimes asleep, but often awake, walking around, talking to people, holding conversations, but my conscious mind's completely gone. Wow. It's all just my subconscious. It's just I'm just running on autopilot. Yeah, right. You know? So, um, oh. Some of the incidents that happened up in the Rocky Mountains in Canada. Oh my goodness! Yeah. <laughs> that is crazy. I, I, I crossed a six-lane really. Yeah, you know, the road. You've been you've been to Canada, right? No. Okay. Well, the road between Vancouver and Banff. Right. Uh, no, no, no. So the, the, um, not Banff. The, that's on the way back uh, to uh, through to Jasper. Right. Massive, massive freeway. Incredibly busy. So it's like eight lanes. You know, four lanes each side easily. Right. And a, a bit in the middle. I crossed them completely in my drugged out subconscious state. Whoa. I walked I walked across the entire thing to try and hand feed an elk um, <laughs> who's protecting his babies. Oh jeez. Yeah, and more more people get injured by elk than by bear in in Canada. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when they've got their babies, and so then I've got then there's me with my camera with the other little compact camera with me as well, and I'm shooting shots of this thing with a flash on oh. from about <laughs> about a foot away. Yeah, and so there's all these photographs of this bloody elk, and it, its face has taken up the entire entire frame. You know, oh. that close at like 28 mil, and it's got this expression on its face, and it just says. Too stupid to kill. <laughs> <laughs> I then I then walk back across a whole eight lanes of freeway again. Whoa. And oh, yeah. now I'm still alive beyond me. Yeah. <laughs> so that sort of stuff. Oh, oh, the stories I could tell when I'm on drugs. I tell you. Oh, wow. Oh. But the worst thing is they've stopped making that drug now. Which is the so next time I have to go to that sort of situation, I have to find uh, yeah something else that's got a bit of kick to it. So. Apparently, it was a, uh, a highly controlled I'm, I'm, substance. I'm thinking of Huey Lewis in the news. I want a new drug. <laughs> well, it, well, it's a drug called Xanax. Xanax is, uh, yeah, is, is is on a prohibited list, and it's, it was a very controlled substance. Yeah, right. but but here's let, let, let me let's not even talk photography for. I'll, I'll tell you, I'll regale the story <laughs> of the first time I needed these. This is like I can't remember what year it was. It was thirty odd years, forty years ago or something. Okay, I had this chance to go to New Zealand fly fishing. Mm. Right. With a mate of mine, and uh, so it's right. I'll, I'll do it. I'll, I'll brave myself. I'll do it, but I'll take some drugs to go on the plane because I couldn't fly in those days without drugs. <laughs> so I went to a doctor, and he was an Indian doctor. And I've walked in and I said, um, "If you guys want your problem, I said, "Well, I've got a bad fear of heights, and uh, I've got to go to New Zealand, and I want something that's going to help me on the flight." He said, oh, "Okay." So he writes out a prescription and hands it to me. And I said, "Okay, well, you know, what is it, and what do I do?" He goes, well, you get the cream, and you rub it on the affected spots twice a day. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, what do I do with it, sorry? He goes, you get the cream, and you put it on your affected spots twice a day. And I'm like, I do what? <laughs> he goes, you get the cream, and, you put, and I'm going, oh, shit, what, are my eyes? I wrap it on because my eyes are what sees the heights. Do I, does it make me eyes all blurry? So, uh, I do what with it? He goes, you get the cream and rub it on your hives twice a day. I said, not hives. I don't have a fear of hives. I don't have a fear of heights. Heights. He goes, oh. So he scribbles something else on a, on a, a, a prescription, hands it to me and says, thanks very much. Walk out the door, bundle up and just throw it in the bin. <laughs> confidence is very low by this stage, you know. So the trip's the trip starting to approach. I've got to do something about it. So I happen to be reading a Woman's Day magazine. Yeah. And uh, there's a story of Whoopi Goldberg, and Whoopi Goldberg is scared of flying. All right, and so okay. she, yeah, so she, yeah, so she takes this drug called Xanax, yeah. uh, which helps her get over the flights. I said, oh, well, fair enough, yeah. Robert Smith from the Cure, same problem, by the way. Just oh. bring that up out of complete irrelevance. So I go to a different doctor, yeah. as you would, and I said, explain. I've got a fear of flights. I emphasise the word heights, <laughs> and I've got to get to New Zealand. I'm flying, and, and he goes, "Oh, you know, no idea what to give you." He says, 
I said, well, what about Xanax? He goes, well, how's it spelt? So it's X A and A X. So he pulls out this big, big dictionary, a big book of pills, and goes to X. And he looks it up and he reads what it does. He goes, yeah, that looks like it should do the job. <laughs> it goes, uh, it comes in three sizes. What size do you reckon you should have? I said, well, I'm a big guy. I better be the biggest ones. He goes, all right. He goes, uh, how many do you reckon you need? I said, oh, better give me 100. <laughs> yeah. And so he goes, actually, writes me a prescription for 100 of these highly controlled pills. <laughs> <laughs> so I go and so I get them now. Whenever you get new new medication, my suggestion would be to test it yeah. before you need it. Yeah, this is what we call hindsight advice. <laughs> <laughs> After the fact advice. I'm driving to the airport. Yeah, I'm about twenty minutes from the airport. I pop my first pill. Oh, no. I have no idea what it, I have no idea what it does. I have no idea how long it takes to work. Yeah. I have no idea if it's going to work. There you go. Pop a pill. I get to the airport. I'm in the queue to go through customs. Nothing's happening. So I pop a pill. Oh, Jesus. You know? <laughs> I get through uh, customs and I'm waiting to board the plane. Nothing's happened. I pop a pill. Oh, what? Right? Whilst, it, whilst uh, it's time to board the plane... And it was during renovations at the airport. So you got to walk out on the tar- tarmac and look up the bridge, up the stairwell, up to the plane. Yeah. And even that was high. So I saw so pop a pill. Now they've upgraded me to first class, right? So I go, I get in the first class. I'm sitting there. Nothing's happened. I'm scared. Shitless. I said, "Excuse me, can I have a glass of water?" So he brings me a glass of water. I pop a pill. Whoa. That's the last. That's the last thing I remember for 26 hours. Whoa. Right. I wake Shh. up the next day. The next day in New Zealand at this lodge, about a six-hour drive away from where, where we landed. Now, I'd met my guide, mate. The, 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 well, he was my guide then. He wasn't a mate. He became a mate. He was a guide then. And he's and I'll come out. I've, I've, I've woken up. I'm feeling pretty good. I, you know, I thought, oh, I'd better get my camera loaded and get ready to take some photos of the day and I'll pick up my camera. It's got a roll of film and 27 shots taken. And there's nothing in it when I left. So what's unusual? And I've walked out, and, and the guy, my mate Mike, he's looking at me going, um, he- hello, uh, me. I've got, oh, g'day, Mike. I'm Glenn. He goes, hi. Yeah, uh, it really, really scared. You're yeah, really worried about what he'd got. And then he finally realized that I've obviously come out of whatever fugue it was. Now, the only thing I remember, I must admit, though, I did wake up at New Zealand Airport in customs in a small room being interrogated. Wow. And this, and this guy holding this bottle of pills saying, Do you have a prescription for these? <laughs> that's, that's, that's all I remember. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, we'd stopped at some restaurant where I lost my wallet. We'd done all sorts of shit. It was just the craziest loss of loss of time you could ever imagine. But the whole time I'd been up and walking around and doing stuff. I, I remember once I was in customs, I was stuffed with food. So I was obviously eating an awful lot. And when I finally got home and got my film developed, because back in the days of film, there was 27 photos of the mountain rangers outside the plane window. Right. But I didn't have a window seat. Uh, but these are all out there. <laughs> You know what? I've never, ever been upgraded to first class ever, ever again. <laughs> so I'm sure I'm on some sort of block list somewhere. Yeah, too too dangerous to fly. So, yeah, they, 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 so a little little thing. Um, having more than two, million, two milligrams in a day, really dangerous. I had five milligrams. Whoa. <laughs> uh, the funny things we do. The funny things. Man, that's yeah. scary. Yeah, I know. So if you're going to go out somewhere that's really boring for the day, you know, Xanax is your friend. <laughs> Take enough. Won't remember, won't remember any of it. Jeez. So anyway, that's it. That's it. That's my, that's, my, that's my silly story of me being a dick. <laughs> I'd like to break into the podcast briefly to mention that we now have a Patreon account. If you get any value at all from our photographic giggle fest each week we'd really appreciate it if you could spare a couple of bucks a month just to help keep the servers running the link will be in the show notes much appreciated now back to the podcast tell me about some new tamron lenses i've got lots more stories of me being a dick no that's okay i'd rather hear about tamron lenses yeah so tamra today announced two new lenses yeah uh the lens the lens i've been shooting with for the last sort of six or eight weeks the yeah. new 11 to 20 mil 2.8 for APS-C Sony cameras. Oh, so okay. Sony for like the 6000 series. So what, that's, that's like a 16 to 30? On 16 a... to 35, give or take, yeah, yep. something like that. Yeah, right. All 30, so it's a, a nice useful range. Yeah. And they also released a 150 to 500 
for Sony, um, what are they called? The, their full frame, what do they call those, A7s, A's? The no. A mount. Oh, sorry, E mount. No, E mount, what's the, they're, still, they're just called sevens, are they? Sony seven. The, the eight, yeah, the seven series, yep. Isn't there, isn't there another, isn't there a lot, that's a before the number? A for so alpha. A. Oh, so it's like, oh, yeah, so it's an A7 series camera. So, yep. the, so 150 the five, which looks a really nice lens, actually. Yeah. I so. that would be, uh, of course, everyone's just bleating on, on social media, 6.7, you know. 6.7, <laughs> <laughs> what's the one, 6.7? Yeah. But they look pretty darn good, yeah. I, I reckon even if you're not interested in the lenses, it's definitely worthwhile going on to uh, DP Review or Peter Pixel. Uh, and just look at the comments, <laughs> as always. <laughs> Priceless. Uh, I, I just had a look before on the um, the Tamron Butch uh, Instagram page, right? Because I follow all the Tamron pages, uh, and uh, and then had to translate every comment because it was funny enough. It was all in German. <laughs> oh, fun, right. Funnily enough, so that, it's not just the Americans and the, the as Western as, as English speaking folk. Who bleat and moan about every damn thing? <laughs> the comments in German. <laughs> Tamron for the I've said German accent. Tamron for the last four years have been and Sigma I should say Sigma and Tamron have become very uninteresting. Right. It's like really, <laughs> really. It doesn't suit you. Fair enough. I get it. It's not your bag, but yeah, you know. There's plenty just, of people for whom it, okay. it is interesting. Exactly. You know. And then there's all these people. Oh, why is it for Sony? Why wasn't it for Canon or Nikon? Why is it always about Sony? Of course, when they release Canon and Nikon once, it's always, why isn't it for Sony? Yeah. <laughs> Sony, Sony. <laughs> and then, of course, there's always the inevitable, oh, when's the Fuji lens that's going to come out? No, the guys, the guys who are complaining, why is, why is it for Sony? Why isn't it for Canon and Nikon? When the Canon and Nikon versions are released, they're going, oh, yeah, but why isn't it 2.8? Why oh, isn't exactly. it 1,000 yeah. mil? <laughs> oh, no. just why doesn't on, it weigh it's... 20 grams? <laughs> It's just, it's just, you know, well, it should be heavier. It should be lighter. Yeah. yeah. Should be lighter and cheaper and longer and, oh, God. and faster. It's a, it, it really is, it really is quite a leap, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's definitely worthwhile going through and having a bit of a flick through the, the, um, the other countries' nationalities pages and look at the comments <laughs> on there. Cause you see that we're photographers of, of, of the world, you know, like, we're all idiots. You know? <laughs> but so the 11 to 20 is a, is a cracking little lens. Yep. Um, I put a photo up on my Facebook page tonight, the first real photo actually released that's not in the Tamron's product page. Not, not amongst the hundred that you gave them. Well, well it was, but they didn't use it, so stuff yeah, you know. Yeah. Um, so, <laughs> the 131, actually, I think. Actually, I think it might actually be image number 113 or something. Some right. stupid thing like that. <laughs> so I'll, I'll be putting out a few photos, and I've got a little little impressions video. Yeah, uh, I do Marlon Brando. I do Clint Eastwood. <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> first impressions of the lens. I, I, I um, love, I love I, the I, image, mate. I've just, just gone to your Facebook page and had a look at it. I like that. Thanks, dude. How could they not use that? I don't know. You know, that's a, they wanted colour. They wanted vibe. They wanted to show the lines. They wanted to show the width. It's all there. Yeah, yeah. And and what? And they had some other guys shooting the lens as well. They put one of his photos up, and it's just like it could be an iPhone shot of a bloody bit of scrubby bushland. Right. Going, what? What the hell? What the hell's that shot? Yeah, like, right. I worry, I worry my heart out about this stuff, and then you go post that, thinking that's good. It's like, yeah, I should, I should have just shot in my backyard for one afternoon and been done with it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, and once again, the brief was, you know, they wanted you know, the cityscapes and they wanted color and they wanted sunrise, they wanted blue skies. Of course, we didn't have any of that as we as yeah, we discussed. Yeah. None of that at all for the entire time. But, um, but yeah, I've got a, a couple of photos that morning. For, there's like five minutes of light yeah. where, it was, where it, was, it was good. And um, there's a couple of different shots from that that I kind of like. They didn't choose any of them. So, yeah, well, right. How do bizarre. You not know anything, do you not know anything about photography, guys? You, know, you, want, straight, <laughs> you want effectively straight out of camera, yeah. interesting stuff, you know, and so I provide that and you don't choose it. You yeah. choose the boring stuff, you know. That's weird. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, crazy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then so the one hundred and fifty to five hundred. I mean, that's going to be a, a cracking little oh. sports slash wildlife lens because it's pretty small. I want to get my hands on that. Or maybe we can organise a uh, a a, uh, a, loan? a loaner. Yeah, yeah. I'd be I'd be right into that. Yeah. But, um, and Kath and I are now talking again 
about because it, it doesn't look like we're going to be able to travel internationally anytime soon. Well, New uh, Zealand. Yeah, other than New Zealand. Singapore's coming. Yeah. But we're thinking, again, that, you know, we might look at the Northern Territory and a potential road trip yeah. up there. So, That'd um, be pretty cool. Something like that, 150 to 500 would be epic. Yeah, we'll get some great landscape stuff with that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, well, let, let's let's keep that in mind when it comes to... Uh, For sure. ...to your travel. Because you know, I, I, I put it out there that it looks so good. All I need now is someone to give me a Sony camera. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was because what's it? I was out shooting today with the Canon, and I'm walking. I'm walking across the car park to go into the into the uh, the grounds of the mansion. I'm going, geez, this camera's heavy. <laughs> <laughs> first first time ever that I felt it big and heavy. Ever. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's like, geez, that's a big heavy but camera. You have got the one fifty five hundred Canon version of that lens, though, right? No, I've got the, I've got the Tamron one hundred fifty six hundred. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, which is big. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you know, I like new stuff. Yeah, you know? and is that the same aperture range, the one fifty six hundred? I think it's six point three instead of six point seven. Yeah, but right. my, yeah, my, yeah negligible. Yeah, and um, yeah, so that's a, that's why I use in Africa and and portraits sometimes. It's a crack yeah. lens, but yeah, but you know, there's some shots I was trying to do today, and not having a flexible screen really just drove me crazy. Right. It's like, oh, God, I'd love to. So maybe maybe at some point I'll have to invest in a Canon R5 or an R6 or something with a flexible screen. Yeah. If you're doing something that's not portraits, even if you are doing portraits, there's, there's a lot of times when that low angle is really handy. Yeah. When I was photographing the chickens, for example, it would have been very handy to uh, – Yeah. And, uh, and eye focus. I must say eye focus because I've got some cracking shots of the, uh, of the chickens, but they're, they're not in focus. Yeah. Because the camera yeah, didn't focus on the eyes. Yep. I'm not sure how well Sony's focus works on little tiny beady red eyes. It does work well. On tiny beady red eyes? Yep. Around an entire red head? Yep. Really? Yep. Oh, I don't know. It I, is amazing. I'd like to test that because the whole, half the head's red and this is t- and the eye's tiny. Yep. Yeah, and I'm doing full body, you know, chicken. Yeah. So I'd be interested to see how well it would. that would be a good test, though, wouldn't it? But yeah. being that it's because it's not an isolated eye, yep. you know, it's it, it, like if humans had flesh-coloured eyes, you can imagine how much harder that'd be for the thing to lock in because it would all sort of blend in. I don't know, matey. It's all it's all machine learning these days. You know, the the they, it, re- it recognises a chicken. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, like with the like, I can tell you from my A seven three, right? That yeah. you go into the eye autofocus settings, and you actually have the choice of human or animal. Oh, I know, I know, I know. It's got animal, but animals' eyes. Oh, I suppose sure, it, they it vary. Can blend into, but they're also they're also big yeah. compared to a chicken's eye, which is yeah three mil across. Yeah, and and. But, but I guess I guess dogs' eyes can be the same colour as the fur around yep, their eyes. Totally. God, I may have to borrow a Sony and just go chicken shooting. Totally. <laughs> just, just, just to see. Because that would, that would be a serious thing. But back in the olden days mm. you know, of Minolta, if you remember way back in the days of Minolta, you said those little program cards used to slide into the camera. That's right. Do you yeah. remember those? I wonder if that's a chicken card. Yeah, <laughs> maybe Sony. Maybe Sony needs to come out with like yeah, downloadable programs for your camera based on the type of animal you shoot. Yeah, yeah. I remember when I got my first SLR, which was the uh, Minolta Dynax Seven Thousand, and yeah. it had that card slot that you could load, you know, new custom actions via you know these external memory card things, and. A mate of mine had the the card that allowed you to program the camera so that when you hit the film rewind button, yeah. it wouldn't suck the film into the canister. It would That's leave, right. it would the, leave tab the tab out. out. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I got him to customize mine so that I could swap, you know, rolls of film mid mid roll. You know, so I could shoot half yeah, a roll of yeah. hundred, and then I could take it out and put in a roll of thirty two hundred, and do some stuff with that, and then put the hundred back in and leave the lens cap on and go click 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 yeah, through shoot, however shoot many frames that. I'd already shot. Yeah, uh, God, I remember doing all that back in the how day. far well, we have back, come. But back in the back in the days, when you had to manually rewind it. You had to kind of guess. Yeah, so when it's cut, how far how far to wind it off the. Okay, it's just come up the spool. Do another half a turn. Oh, it's gone too far. <laughs> but then you have those little tongue depressor kind of things that you put inside the, and so you can pull them out. Yeah, oh, okay. Those. Right. Yeah, we used, to, we, used to, we used to do this all the time back at the camera stores. You had this little 
weird little device with like two sliding little um, plates, really thin plates, right? And and you'd you'd stick one in, into the film canister yeah. and then uh, slide in the second plate. So basically, in the hope that the second plate would go over the top of the film, yep. the other one went under the film, <laughs> and then you. would Pull out really fast, not too fast, but pull out and hopefully drag the the tongue back out. With yeah, it. right. <laughs> Sometimes it was really easy. Yeah. Okay, then if that didn't work, what you had to do is then because some films you could pop the lid off. Yeah, you could actually take the the the, the, the top, the actual the, either the base or the top off. So you go into a black into a yep. dark bag, yep. and you pull the damn top off, pull the film back out, pop the t- the top back on again. <laughs> Yeah, pray, it was, pray it was light, light. And so what we always used to do back in the olden days uh, is we'd always have hiding in the black bag a, a, a an exposed, just a roll of film all loose, exposed, right? Okay. And you'd fix their film up, put it in the corner, and then you'd drag out, <laughs> you, you pull your hand out of the black bag and all this nigga would come out with it. Oh, no! Oh! <laughs> <laughs> and the and the look of terror on their faces, or we or we have a uh, <laughs> we were, we were pricks, we were doing it all the time. You know? uh, uh, oh. It'd be good if you had some like high profile wedding photographer. <laughs> oh. The shit we used to do to people just just, just, just to entertain ourselves, you know. Uh, that's, oh, that's uh, great. Funny stuff. But, uh, yeah, yeah, anyway, that's uh, the, the whole days of film, thanks for the long, long but, past. But, you know, it, it reminds me of the adage, you know, that necessity is the mother of invention. You know, the, oh, the yeah, lengths yeah. we would go to to have variable ISO, you know. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and, yeah variable ISO. And now it's all at the and push of a button, you know. <laughs> Look how much we take for granted, yeah. yeah. And you can tell that the young people are there, and they won't believe <laughs> they you. They won't believe you. <laughs> no idea. Anyway, yeah, so you, you know I bought a new Mac the other week. Yes. Yeah. Well, iPad, uh, uh, Apple just announced some new uh, iPads this week with uh, the same chip, the have, M1 chip. Have you chip. thrown it down any stairs yet? No, no, no. I hadn't even dropped it once. Well, go you. I know. I know, right? <laughs> it's like weeks. Yeah. <laughs> Winning at life. I had to go look at the D-Preview page for these new M1 uh, MacBook Pros because they look fabulous. But, um, yeah, do you know the top spec one <laughs> for an iPad? Top spec in Australia is about $4,500. For an iPad? <laughs> for an iPad. What? It's like a two-terabyte iPad. It's like four four and a half thousand dollars I know, I know. Oh, man. Oh, we laugh and laugh That's and laugh. luxury tax for you. But, but then I, was, I, I thought I'd just go read the comments. And, yeah, once again, <laughs> if you've got more time, <laughs> spend some time with the comments. I, it's I not big enough. Of, it's too heavy. Did, the battery doesn't last big. long enough. It, it, doesn't, <laughs> it needs it, more it, storage. It doesn't, <laughs> it, doesn't run, run, it doesn't run the right operating system. <laughs> I, had, I pulled out a couple, just a couple of the comments that I liked the yeah. most. Yeah, I didn't have much time to get to all of them, but one guy goes, "I will wait for MacBook Pro 14-inch Extreme Dynamic Range that can extract extract more HDR from low HDR cameras." <laughs> and then somebody responds, "What? What's a low HDR camera? Because surely by the d- H high, yeah. is it low high? Maybe it's like the year nah. Everyone says it's just the low high dynamic range. Uh, so I have no idea. Uh, this guy says you you are an Apple. This is another 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 comment thread. You are in Apple defense funny mode. Such naming definitely works on a certain level of intellectual development. But please consider that others have a more developed intellect and don't buy the crystal clear mega extra super razor turbo bright infinitely floating full of. Naming for an LCD panel, which, which I thought was which I thought was rather funny, and then so it says nonsense nomenclature such as retina really turned me off, and to which someone replied, "Well, I tell my doctor that, and she just says prostate prostate cancer is very serious," and I'm like, "Lady, what am I paying you for?" <laughs> so there's just a couple, there's just a couple of little gems I came across. I thought, oh, those threads. There's entertainment. Who needs to go to the movies? That's it. You know, just read the internet. <laughs> uh, but I, I have, a, I have a, a really fascinating little story I came across, though. I, I will, uh, I will bring up Prince Philip. As you know, he croaked, yeah, uh, just recently, uh, and he's. We know that because he's not blinking. Yes. I think that's the that's the, the first first giveaway I'm <laughs> told. You know, the thing is, he's not going to get a letter from the Queen now because he died at ninety nine. That's right. Yeah, that's that's pretty sad. But he organised his own funeral for years. He's been planning his funeral. 
right? Right. He got like a he had Land Rover customize a, a Land Rover to be a hearse. As an wow. example, right? he said plans in for years of all the stuff, who's going to stand where. Now, COVID affected a lot of his plans, but he had. But one thing that did that did go that he had planned was he employed the royal photographer to hide inside a fake pillar in the church, right? To fo- to photograph the people at the funeral candidly, so they didn't know they were when the photo was taken. Wow, <laughs> how's that for for depth of planning for your funeral, <laughs> right? We're going to build a fake pillar <laughs> and we're going to stick, stick the photographer in it. It's oh, like, that's classic. Uh, why would you even think of that? You know, what... <laughs> and what's what's the point? Because once you're gone, you're not going to know whether the photographer was able to carry out his task and if he was, exactly. whether he's going to be yeah. able to do anything with the photos. What if the column falls over Yeah, the pillar falls over? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Squishes somebody else and they're dead. Yeah, uh, it's dear, um, dear. The, it was just the bizarrest, you know, eccentric, and, yeah. and from everything I've heard about him, that probably seems a, you know, a fair point. He was a bit of an eccentric character, you know. Uh, I, I always remember the, him saying uh, one family photo event, you know, the, doing the big family portrait, yeah. and uh, you could hear him mumble off camera because of a video as well. I oh, just happened to take the f-ing photo. <laughs> It's like, oh, Lord. That's a, that's a cantankerous bastard I could probably get along with. Yeah. <laughs> and I also I also found out this week, hmm. I found, well, I came across the world's sexiest flash trigger. Okay. Sexiest in what sense? Oh, the, well, in every sense. It looks awesome. Right. Yeah. And that's that's got me that's, that's got me one just by itself. It, it looks need like to be a smartphone. Good. Like, uh, sorry, a uh, smartwatch. Uh, it does. It looks like a Garmin extra, <laughs> extra watch <laughs> from the front. You should see it from the side on. The things, the things. It, it, it looks like a, a joystick you'd use for launching a plane or something right. or missiles. Yeah, uh, but this thing can can trigger almost every brand of flash, right? Which is pretty cool. It can do. Uh, it can make yeah, do strobing. It can do all sorts, all sorts of stuff. So the guy who invented Pocket Wizard has invented this, right? So he's got he's got he's got um, some 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 kudos behind him, yeah. Some yep. some 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 track work. Got some runs on board. Yep. Yeah, and so it does stuff like uh, hey, it's touch screen, full color touch screen, multiple flash brands simultaneously. You you, you tw- twirl the outside ring, you know, the the, the ring of the watch thing hmm. to dial up and dial down your power. Okay, which is pretty cool. That's kind of a good, kind of nice tactile way of doing it, you know. So, so is there a second part of this? There's a receiver element that attaches to the flash. No, because it'll it'll trigger to anyone's brand of flashes. But not all it, flashes it, can be remotely powered up and down. Any any remotely any remote flashes. Huh. Okay. Any, any mod any like your Godoxes, your uh, your Canons, your Nikon's, your all all the brands of flash that have been out there in the last ten years. Okay, uh, we'll be able to do that. Um, which is pretty good, but it's also a GPS device, so it'll it'll um, wow. It can, you can remote camera trigger with it. Yeah, you can sound tr- you can sound trigger. You can do. Um, it's got a built-in light, which gives you autofocus assist in low light. Oh, nice! It's got um, what's it? Is it in- you can do interval timing with it. It's so like all these different triggers you'd have all in one bundle. Nice. You know? So that that looks it, and it that's it. It's sexy as hell, and that that's going to be worth yeah you know, half as cost just to be pretty yeah so i mean it's, a, it's fairly expensive but for what you're getting it's uh yeah that's an, an all-encompassing tool yeah so um according to the uh petapixel review 449 us yeah it didn't say it's gonna be cheap no <laughs> but, if, but if you think about all the different devices you probably buy to do yeah yeah you know, your, your time lapse trigger your lightning trigger your flash triggers you you're adding up there anyway well know? that's why I used to love trigger trap but then they went out of business but they didn't trigger flashes did they yeah so what it was was a smartphone app and you would plug your smartphone into your camera and then the app would control the the triggering for Oh, sorry, for flashes? Um, no, no. No, I don't think it did. <laughs> I think it was more about controlling your camera. Yeah, it was, yeah. But it did, It did like, you know, um, you know lightning uh, triggering and sound triggering. And and the worst thing is that, that is you have to use your phone. So how yeah. am I supposed to be on my, uh, my Minecraft or whatever game <laughs> on my phone 
while out <laughs> taking photos. Because clearly yeah, how, the photographer is boring you. How am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to be doing my duck face selfies on my camera behind me at sunrise <laughs> if my phone's been used? Yeah. yeah. How am I going to be filming myself? Yeah, video, my, my vlogging myself, um, <laughs> shooting if my phone's being used. I need a second phone, and now you're already up over four ninety nine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it looked pretty darn cool. I gotta say, it's a, um, a a pretty interesting little piece of kit. Yep. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Now I saw just before we started recording tonight. A story on DIYphotography.net, which I did not have a chance to actually read, but I saw the headline. So, a a normal level of research. Yeah, absolutely. New photography show coming to Germany. Could Photopia replace Photokina? So, yeah. Oh, see, I I read it as being a TV show. (laughs) I'm going, well, you know, great. The Germans are getting a TV show about photography. Oh, is that what it is? I don't know. That's why when when you... (laughs) When you said that, I just I just automatically thought TV show. Oh, new, but it could be. This I can't new show article, is happening so. in Hamburg, according to their website. And the first event is planned for September twenty three to twenty six, twenty twenty one. So yeah, no, it's a trade show. Yeah, I, I, I got it in the end, but my first yeah. thoughts were <laughs> was that yeah. it was a TV show. <laughs> TV show, yeah. So uh, great, but another another photo show in another language. <laughs> That's yeah. going to help us all a lot. <laughs> we'll get, we get those people from Tamron Deutschland to go comment on it. Be, be yeah, look, it, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see, can a four-day trade show survive where one that had been around for 20 years couldn't? But it depends on what they, what they want it to be, you know. Right. Like the, fo- the photo show, so that was called in England, is pretty successful um, because it's, it's a it's – a, it's not trying to be the massive you know, launch party place, five hundred thousand dollars stands as your cheapest stand. Yeah. It's not trying to be that mega massive buddy thing. Well, let's have a look at their website and click on the website. So I'm going to do some research that you should have done earlier. <laughs> Live, <laughs> like I said, exists, I only found the story about two minutes before we started recording. It's it's going to be a paradise for for photo and video fans, as well as all the smartphone users who strive for better pictures and, of course, an ideal location for established and up and coming players of the imaging industry to show their products. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am particularly pleased that the photography has found a great home in my adopted and favourite city of Hamburg with Photopia. That's a Thomas Holbecker. <laughs> I'd have to reject something. We want to offer you the best possible content. I think reject. I don't want that. Exhibition Marathon. We're a given Hamburg perspective. Uh, with the right settings and the right perspective, photography can produce impressive images. <laughs> this is good. We're all learning. We're all learning. We're all learning something here. But the word perspective also denotes a scenario of hope, a vantage point towards a time after the lockdown. Interlinking these two meanings of the word is the subject of the photographic art project. We're given Hamburg perspective. I love their optimism that the uh, pandemic's going to be over by September. (laughs) (laughs) It's much... See, here's where you're wrong. It says here, bold, in bold, I might add, much more than a trade show. It's... A real occasion, right? <laughs> well, good on them. I mean, I hope it, I hope it works. It works well. And yeah. I, I, so what I'm what I'm imagining is it's a big shed, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> with some some trestle tables, right? right? With yeah, with every Tom, Dick, and Larry trying to sell their photos to other photographers who say no, I've got that. Of course, every every I could have taken that. <laughs> oh, oh, I could have, oh, I've got three three just like that at home. <laughs> so, and there'll be some stands where scantily clad women will be stood on, and people will form <laughs> that will an, be unruly, for them. An, an, an unruly <laughs> unru- unruly mob. A photograph from any angle, which also includes other people in the shots, because all the other photos, and that, this is what happens at every show I've ever been to. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, and look, it's not, there was a show in Australia which was kind of trying to do the same thing, I can't remember what it was called, and yeah, America's still got you know, a couple of shows, sort of, like, yeah, but a little bit more industry based, like the uh, uh, WPPI, Wedding Portrait Professionals. Uh, whatever, and there's a few other shows still going, 
but yeah, nothing on the. I think the scale of things like Photo Kino and that will never come back because you know no one can afford millions of dollars for a trade show because there's just yeah. no return on the investment. You know? Yeah. But that good, good on. Would that there was more things around the world for us to go to. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and David Marland sent us an email. He did. He's a lovely he said, man, that Mr. Marland. Hi, guys. Firstly, a comment on the last episode. Now, this was in relation to 501, I think, uh, or 502, one or the other. Firstly, a comment on the last episode. My adult daughter listened with me and was absolutely delighted with Glynn's roasting of me. And okay, asks, next, so that, that could be any episode, then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's and it. asks you to keep up the good work. There uh, you go. Somebody appreciates me. That's right. Secondly, this line of clothing with an abundance of pockets was drawn to my attention by a friend as a way of keeping carry-on luggage to a minimum while keeping all your camera gear with you on a flight. And, of course, it's the Scotty vest. I'm sure most of our listeners are already familiar with the Scotty vest. Uh, in particular, the one to look at is the Q-U-E-S-T, or Quest vest. It boasts 42 pockets in small and medium. You can put a... Some 30, of them even useful. Yeah. In small and medium, you can put a 13-inch laptop, and in the larger sizes, a 15-inch laptop. It's worth scrolling through the features. I can take a desktop in mine. That's right. <laughs> Even for the novelty value, there are a few mixed reviews on the quality of this line of clothing, but what blew me away is the possibility of carrying so much gear in a jacket. Cheers, David. So I'll put the link in the show notes for anyone who wants to check those out. Funnily enough, you should mention that, is I saw Scotty Vest before they ever came to market. Right. At PMA trade show in Vegas. Right. You know, the, probably the last ever trade show um, that PMA put on. Uh, is where I saw them. So, so back before trade shows became consumer centric. Yeah, yeah. So they were there launching their pro- and, and they were really good. My friend Erin uh, Manning, um, yep. she had a couple of them, I think, and uh, found them to be, them to be exceptionally good. You right. Know? So, um, yeah, and, and, yeah. Talking about getting, trying to get onto planes, that'd be the perfect tool, wouldn't it? Yeah. You know? If you've got forty-two pockets. Yep. You know, and so, and some of them probably even useful. Yeah. <laughs> this pocket takes a USB key. Yeah. <laughs> this pocket also takes a USB key, uh, and this pocket don't put anything in it because you'll never find it again. <laughs> yeah. It'll get lost amongst all the other pockets. Uh, but no, I, I thought they, they looked really good at the time. Um, mm. It just didn't appeal to me uh, because I, if, if I wear jackets, I get too hot. Right, and that's that's yeah. I'm a shorts and t-shirt guy most of the year, so right. I, I would kind of cook in it. But that was the only kind of the only. Uh, the only downside to it, yeah. Yeah. Hey, Bruce. Yeah. Guess what? What? Nine. Nine what? Listeners. <laughs> what? We've got nine listeners now. Do you, uh, do, do you, me- do you remember that the, the movie Ghostbusters? I never saw Ghostbusters. You never saw Ghostbusters. Can you believe what kind that? Of culturally malignant person are you? <laughs> I know. I was never allowed to watch any movies when I was a, a kid. Uh, were you tied to your bed and fed got m- m- mouldy, rusty bread it, or something? It, it as well? wasn't yeah. far off that. Really? Uh, no, never saw ET. Never saw Poltergeist. Never saw you know, Ghostbusters. You, 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 you can, you're allowed to now, Bruce. Just so I, you know. <laughs> I know just, I'm allowed to now, but they're just not interesting to me now. But, how do you know you haven't seen them? Yeah, well, that's it. But yeah, you I, could I, go. That's the best thing I've ever seen. What was the last movie you saw? The last movie I saw, um, I don't know, I watched something the other night, but I can't remember what it was. <laughs> well, I guarantee you this, Ghostbusters is better than that. Right. Because <laughs> at least you remember the name Ghostbusters. Yeah. Anyway, in the mo- this would have worked so much better if you'd seen Ghostbusters. Right. Because there's a scene <laughs> where they set up their business for the first time yeah. and the phone rings and the secretary's like, yeah, whatever. And then shock comes over and she yells out, we got one! Well, that's the same with our listeners, right. Bruce. Yeah. We got one. Oh, cool. <laughs> Over to you. Paul Sutton. Paul, the big P. He, he heard Joe Edelman on Shutters, Inc. talking on, on Joe's own channel, talking about it. And so Paul came to check out Shutters, Inc. And, yeah, he's, he's a new he stayed, for the, he stayed for the free steak knives. That's right. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, so I, I, welcome I, 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 don't aboard, I don't think we've got a Paul, do we? Do we have a Paul? I don't it's know. Not, 
We could yeah. slot in a Paul. <laughs> if, there's, if there's another Paul out there uh, who listens, please let us know on that Facebook page and we'll we'll designate new Paul something else. <laughs> it could be like uh, John Paul. No, there's a Pope. Uh, could, we, we could come up with another name for him anyway. Excellent. But welcome, Paul. It's, uh, does he have anything wonderful to say other than well, he, he found us through Joe? And did he say that we're so much better than Joe? He did not. Oh. <laughs> I'm not sure I like him already. <laughs> uh, but he did say to me, would you be interested in a chat with an underwater photography couple? That's my, right. He's, he's Australian. My wife is also a marine biologist with shark research papers published from her work with New South Wales Fisheries. There you go. So, yeah, so might might get him on for a yarn at some point. That'd be, that'd be fabulous. The challenges, the struggle, the yeah. light, the, etern- the eternal mystery. Yeah, and dealing with debris in the water, like just the floating crap in the water. Like, I don't know how you deal with that, but anyway. What, cheese? What? Cheese. You said dealing dealing with debris in the water. Oh. <laughs> right. <laughs> Did you hear about the Did you hear about the massive explosion in the French cheese factory? No. All that was left was debris. Right. Excellent. Uh, I think on that note we'll wrap it up. That would be a, that would be a, an interesting uh, interesting and something we've never really touched on. Yeah, absolutely. So, awesome. So, Paul, please. Yeah. Talk to talk to the trouble and strife. We'd love to have you both on. For sure, and, and obviously, obviously, his wife's obviously intelligent, so she probably's not going to listen. But um, <laughs> she, she, she may step down to our level and at least talk to us for a little bit. Exactly, fabulous. Exactly. Do, uh, my recommendation, Paul: uh, don't let her listen to an episode before before you ask her to come on. Just, <laughs> just tell her this is a podcast, you know, and 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 just just don't let her listen. It'll probably give her more of a chance for getting her on the show. Excellent. All right, mate, will you have a good week? I shall. I shall indeed. Take care. Goodbye, everyone, all nine of you, and (laughs) um, we'll talk next week. (laughs) We'll see you, mate. Bye, all. Shutters Inc. Another audio to you.com quality podcast. For questions, comments, and feedback, email theboys at shuttersincpodcast.com.